Hi everyone! Hi Ejo! Hi! This is our 8th episode! Congrats! We already made 8 episodes already! It's like 3 months! I know! I feel so busy. Oh, I'm sure you must feel busier because you do a lot more than I did. Brainstorming what we're going to talk about and the doing editing, all these stuffs. Yeah, but I, I quite enjoy it. I love Me it. Too. I love what I'm doing now, yeah. Yeah, full time doing it. Well, if someone sponsor <laughs> us, I'm happy to do it full time. Right. But Quit your you job. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Someone, please. This is a sponsorship section. If you're interested, please sponsor us. We will bring you more content, a better content, and then we'll make sure that we allocate enough time to promote your product. Yeah, therefore, Kathy can quit her job and pay <laughs> all her attention in this <laughs> popular channel. So what are we going to talk about today, Ijo? Right, so today we will bring you one of the top three Chinese palace dramas, which called Ruiz Royal Love in the Palace. Actually, I'm currently what? watching it. Binge watching Oh, it. wow. Yeah. What's your uh, thoughts so on, on this one? I think there are so many information going on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, there are about like 20 concubines that fall in love with the emperor. I think the emperor is quite shit. Be you I know the word yeah. Janan. <laughs> I know, yeah. He's quite... Mm, he's quite... Mm. Yeah. Um, and then there are 20 concubines in this palace drama that all take part. There are just like too many information and then too many characters going on. Yeah, and this drama has 87 episodes. Oh my god, It's quite yes. long. I know. 87. Yeah. Ooh. That, yeah, it's, they are so long. So I'm I'm on the halfway through. Okay, I'm, good on you. I'm on my 40th episode. Mm -hmm. But you, what's your thought about that? Well, I thought it was moving a bit slow then I think. But I'm really glad that I stuck with it because the drama in there was really good. I won't spoil it, but I'll say the ending was quite... Quite sad? Not sad, quite different. In what way? Unlike other palace dramas, the woman chose power instead of yeah. love. But for yeah. this drama, Rui actually chose love. Over so power. she follows her heart in the end. Yeah, remember Zhen Huan? She chose power. Yeah. She chooses power over love the only way she can live until till the end yeah and you know what yeah Zhen Huan actually is in this drama so not the really? actress like Zhen Huan yeah really and no. she she becomes the empress mom oh oh the empress mom that's Zhen Huan yes ah okay but they are so different because Zhen Huan she's kind she's pretty she's also smart well, this um, Tai Ho, she's also smart, but she she's not very kind. She tries to kill Rui in the beginning. Yeah, because Rui, her surname is Ula Nara. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the surname of the old empress. Yes. That, that was covered in this Rui. Yeah. But still, I, th I don't think what the Tai Ho did in this drama would be what Zhen Huan does. Well, I think because Zhen Huan already chose power, so she needs to use that power for herself. Yeah, that could be. I didn't so, know that. Huh. So, are these two dramas written by the same author or something? I don't think so. Are they? Okay, okay never mind. That's alright. Do you mind to talk about what this drama is about and why um, do you recommend this drama to our audience? Alright, so just a quick intro in this episode. So we'll briefly talk about what this drama is about and the main characters. Also give you an idea about how this drama related with the legend of Zhen Huan. So this okay. drama has a background in also Qing Dynasty. As we already talked about, it was Zhen Huan's adopted son. So the, the <laughs> new emperor is about the <laughs> fourth prince. Oh, the fourth prince. Oh, yeah. Zhen Huan adopted a son. That's this emperor. Yeah, this emperor. Yeah. Quite dramatic. So in this episode, it's happened when he was a prince. At the beginning, yep. yeah, the female lead, her name was Qing Ying. So if you remember from the Legend of Zhen Huan, Qing Ying was not really good looking. 
Oh, was she in the Legend of Jin Huan as well? Yeah. Ah. Well, it's not really smart. Okay. okay. They, but... they should have thought about Rui when they filmed Jin Huan. Obviously, maybe just maybe they... different directors to make mm. different side of the story. Because, you know, no one knows the true history and they just make up some of the details yeah. in the drama. So, like, when we watch these two dramas, should we view them separately? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because in the old time, we don't have videos. People only write those things by hand, and they all have their own opinions, mainly based on how the emperor think about it. Nowadays, people just guess what happened back to yeah. that day. Yeah. yeah, so for like the details, it's left for others to make it up. Yeah, so like just don't said. take it too serious. Sure. Yeah, it's not the real history. <laughs> Sure, sure. So we yeah. shouldn't take Zhen Huan and Rui as two separate dramas. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So in this drama, the fourth prince and Ula Nara Qingying were childhood friends. Yep. So Qingying was the niece of the old empress. So is that why she needs to become the empress for the new emperor as well? Because she is Ula Nara family. Yeah. When we were talking about this in Mulan, it's an idea of honoring the family oh uh, yeah okay <laughs> honoring that comes back again honoring the third name like that kind of thing yeah yeah so so your family means a lot to you what you can do what you can achieve yeah mm. and it starts from when the fourth prince finally inherited the place of the emperor because Zhen Huan hated Qingying Qingying wasn't able to become the new empress yeah i know that's so sad like when i watch when i watch the like the prince giving the wife thingy like the the first wife gift to Qingying and then he has to take it back and give it to the other girl yeah her like, name was Fu Cha yeah I was like yeah. that's so sad like they they love each other and they belong to be in each other as an emperor he needs to sacrifice what he loves and choose another woman as his wife it's quite sad actually mm. in the history especially the young emperor in order to get the support from a big or a stronger family he needs to marry the girl from the stronger family maybe the girl is not the one he really loved yeah but yeah, yeah. you know and then the thing the rui it's already in Qingying's hand like you can't take right. it back what do you say rui is like the the, the thing right yeah yeah not Ru not Rui as Rui's name. <laughs> okay, this is getting yeah. confusing. But Rui is also an object when you like someone, when you appoint someone as your wife, then you give a Rui. Like I don't know what Rui is. Probably a decoration, house decoration to your wife. Yeah, it's a decoration means wishful that mm. kind of thing. Yeah, sad. Yeah unfortunate that Rui only become now I'm talking about oh okay actually Qing Ying. Qing Ying. shall we clarify the name between Rui and Qing Ying right so the female lead her name was Qing Ying and because Zhen Huan doesn't like her she wants to teach Qing Ying a lesson so so instead of Rui going to die her aunt so in the old empress that were like battling with Zhen Huan, she died to make mm -hmm. Qing Ying alive. Yeah, Cause and I think the, that's how Zhen Huan designed it. Yeah, because Zhen Huan says, two of you, only one can live. Yeah, that's what happened. And then Qing Ying sent Zhen Huan greetings because she is the new concubine of the emperor. So she need to say hello to the emperor's mom. And Zhen Huan realized that Qing Ying was not a good kind because she is from the Uranara family. So after a serious things happened, Qing Ying asked Zhen Huan to change her name as mm. Rui. Yeah. To cut off the Uranara family background and ask for new beliefs. So yeah. Zhen Huan That's changed her name. Smart of her. Kind of like now I'm stand by your side. You that give me a new thing. name. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, that kind of thing. So do you know so, what Rui means? Rui, um, it means because so the character E is quite interesting. Um, mm -hmm. actually, um, made by few little characters. Oh, okay. The first one is E. So one. One. The first one is one. <laughs> yep, one. <laughs> and then uh, the second character is Tsu. That's times. Time. Uh huh. And then the third character is Xin. So that's heart. Ah. I don't remember what exactly Zheng Huan says, but I think when Zheng Huan says, she, she said, um, E is a great character, and I, and I hope you that you you only you only love one person once. So E means beautiful and calm, and Rui asked, uh, E is already good. So why did you put Ru? Why do you add Ru in front of? And she said, so you can so Ru. I think it means to make your wish come true. Yeah, something like beautiful something and. Like yeah. yeah, so to be beautiful and calm as you wish. So it's very complicated. Like one character can mean a lot of things. So what mm. happened after Qing Yun gets a new name? She becomes one of the concubines in the palace. So the yeah. life in the palace started. The battle started. Qing Yun isn't a person who loves palace battles. Gundo. No. Literal translation. Palace battles. Yeah, no. But Rui, and as a concubine, she has to protect herself. Yeah, she has to. Yeah. But there were there are so many ups and downs for Rui. Part of the reason is because she's too nice to everyone. And another reason is that the emperor loves her in the beginning. That's in the nice. palace, too much love from the emperor is a really dangerous sign. Yeah, that means people can come in for you to hunt you down. The other concubines will so jealous and try everything they can. So why does Qianlong love Rui so much? Because they were childhood friends. They are childhood friends. I think uh, Qianlong loves her. So Qianlong has that affection before they marry. Yeah. We can't call that marriage, right? Qianlong is only married with proper wife, but, qi, qi, um, but Fu Rui is not. Yeah, but Rui is not first wife. Yeah, but they kind of during the ceremony when Qianlong, so the emperor, was not an emperor. They did the ceremony, not like in the palace. They just go to the palace and no ceremony kind of thing. So mm. I think for Rui, she did marry to the the, the emperor. Yeah. So, and yeah. when you say Qianlong and Rui, they only love each other in the beginning, does it mean yes. things happen <laughs> yes. when times fly? Well, think about it. If you're a man and you're able to marry with 20 or 30 hundreds of women, would you only love one woman no. for your life? No, because yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. I would have a different woman every single day. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have the responsibility, right? Yeah, but I'll be so tired. I know, but all the women, they just do everything for you. Yeah, like, I have no As worries. They can just, like, <laughs> them, they can compete to be the best one. Yeah, and they cook for you. Like, I know. all the best food, the best I clothes. Know. Life is so yeah. good. <laughs> That's why everyone wants to be an emperor. Yeah. So as the time passed, the emperor Qianlong becomes a mature emperor. So Rui gradually understand and find out how suspicious is, blackness is of the emperor. Uh, I sometimes I sometimes become so gutted at the emperor, like when the emperor just ignores it, just ignores Rui, and puts her in bad yeah. situations for things that she didn't do. I was so mad. <laughs> I'm sure everyone is. So therefore, yeah. mm -hmm. the love between Rui and the Emperor Qianlong gradually goes into a dead end because of the Emperor's 
He doesn't deserve anyone. Rui yeah. is too good for him. And in the old time, there's no way, especially for a concubine, to diverse with the emperor. Rui is probably the first one. She, she didn't diverse diverse, but she cuts off a strand of her hair. Yeah, that means but, a lot. Yeah, you might think, oh, that's nothing, just hair. But in the old time of China, that's really serious. I looked up in the history, that actually happened. That, that wasn't oh. a fictional stuff. That actually happened. Wow. Yeah, I, don't, mm, I don't know what, yeah, I want to know what happened in the real Ruyi and Qianlong, but yeah. But she actually cut hairs off. Yeah. She's a brave woman, I have to say. I know. I know. And then her afterlife, like, you know, like the, they, they really care about their afterlife. They really care mm -hmm. about or where they are buried and then how big the ceremony is apparently Rui like in real records she didn't have a ceremony and then she was buried with like all the normal concubines even though she was a empress oh no yeah. that was really a big thing for an empress yeah so Qianlong yeah. must be really angry at her for cutting her hair off. Wow, Qianlong is so dumb. In that drama, Qianlong is quite smart. Yeah. And um, Qianlong is quite long lived. 80, no, 98, 89? Probably, yeah, quite long lived. Yeah. At that time. In the history as well. Mm, yeah. So, as you are watching the drama, so what do you think about the characters? Which character? Do you like the best, Kathy? Hailan. Of course, Hailan. Hailan. Do you want to introduce who she is? So, she's Rui's best friend, or best sisters. They call, they mm -hmm. call each other, like, among the concubines, so they call each other sisters. Hailan is right. the best one. Mm -hmm. Like, best in terms of their relationship, but also best because she's just slighted among all the concubines. Wow. So it's like and Zhen Huan and Mei Zhuang. Yeah. Great yeah. sisterhood. She was not interested in the emperor's favor. She's a loyal friend and a confidant of Rui. Ah. Also, she gives birth to emperor's favorite son, Yongqi. Oh my god, I love Yongqi. I know, I know. Yongqi. Mm, yeah, Hailan is an exceptionally influential consort in the harem, and she makes use of her influence to deal with a consort who stand in Rui's way. I don't think Hailan should marry with Tianlong. She should marry with Rui. Yeah. They should, they should have a, like a gay story doing Lan <laughs> and Rui. Yeah, because I remember when I watched it, when Hailan gave birth to Yongqi, uh, her son, Hailan was like, Hey look, Rui, we have a son. <laughs> Just like as their sons, not Hailan yeah. and Tianlong's sons. Yeah, she was a uh, let's write him together. I was like, oh. Yeah, I think Hailan and Rui in this drama develops a deeper relationship than uh, Zhen Huan and Mei Zhuang. Yeah, exactly. Because Mei Zhuang was trying to get the Emperor's favor. Hailan just doesn't care. She doesn't care about the Emperor at all. She yeah, only cares yeah. about Rui. Yeah, and just swipe off all the enemies who against Rui. Yeah, because Makes Rui, Rui's palace life so easy. Like, Rui doesn't make these little tricks. Yeah. Hailan can do these tricks. And then Hailan can make these tricks without people noticing her. Yeah, and in the Chinese netizens, they always said, without Hailan, Rui won't leave within 10 episodes. And I was like, oh, that's so true. But Rui is also smart. She just, yeah, doesn't use her smartness. Yeah, she's like, just always be kind and just try not to, to use that little tricks to get the favor. Actually, she doesn't need to in the beginning. Yeah, when people tricks her, putting her in the cult palace, she definitely needs it. Yeah. What other characters that you want to talk about? Alright, so we talked about Hailan. So in the drama, Hailan was from a family was not that strong. She doesn't have a strong family background, so that's why she wasn't gang 
the favor from the emperor at the beginning. But Consort Gao was married to Qianlong, the emperor, with Ru Yi at the same day as concubines. On the same day, but I think Gao was Ge Ge. Yeah. Uh, Ru Yi is one level higher than Ge Ge. Yeah. When Qianlong becomes the emperor, Consort Gao becomes one level higher than Ru Yi because her dad was quite good at deal with the flooding thing. Yeah, yeah, because in China, in especially in ancient China, because of the geographic reasons, there are so many water problems going around. Some areas are too dry; they don't get the water from the Yellow River or the Changjiang, the Yangtze, yeah. and some other places. They get too much water, and yeah. they get floodings every year, like around the same month every year. So Gaul's father is good at doing these things. Yeah. yeah. Now we have now the technology improves, and we have that we have a bridge to block the water. So this this so we don't have this kind of jobs anymore. Yeah, yeah. But back to that time, Gaul's father is quite good at. Do with the flooding, so that makes her one level higher in the palace than Ru Yi. Exactly. Mm -hmm. She's quite cu cute. She's quite innocent. <laughs> Even she doesn't like Ru Yi. She only used that really lower level trick. Everyone can can tell what she was trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone call her noble consort. Yeah, and mm -hmm. she's quite naive. Quite naive. She just hates Rui. Yeah, because she just wants that empress favor. Can we talk yeah. about, also talk about the empress? All right. So the empress, her name is Lang Hua, and she's also from a big family. So that's why Qianlong chose her as proper wife in the beginning. Sorry, she's so jealous that Rui almost become the empress. Yeah, I but she, she never shows that she hates her. Yeah, but close to her death, she kind of shows that she. She kind of like, she said, she she said that she can have anyone to replace her, but just not Rui. True. Any other characters? And Empress and Consort Gao, those two characters, they all have a strong family background. And there's another one. Her name is Ai Ruo. So she is a maid of Rui. Because father was working for Consort Gao's father, and father was quite good at it. So yep. Her father get promoted by the emperor or by the consort Gao's father. Yeah, by so maid, you mean she's a slave? So she's the servant of uh, Rui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what happens to her? Because she... her her father get promoted, she feel herself different with uh, the other maid, and, and she wants she's, her... and she starts to think about serving the emperor as a concubine but she never did you know how like Huan Bi in the legend of Zhen Huan Huan Bi yeah. was, was trying to do the same thing yeah. like wearing beautiful clothes and do makeup and stuff yeah but Huan Bi actually becomes a, a concubine whereas well Ara also but that was a trick from Qianlong. She never actually yeah. served the emperor. Yeah. It's quite funny that when when she's out, she's like, she's the concubine. And she's yeah. a beloved concubine. When she's only in a room with the Qianlong, she's only a servant. Yeah, she only kneels for the whole night. I know. <laughs> the saddest thing. No one likes her because everyone knows that she betrayed Rui. Yeah. Even though they don't like Rui, they also don't like Aruo, who betrayed yeah. who betrayed her lord master. master yeah that was um, a quite a fantasy for Rui. She, yeah she she is a she i think yeah she starts so unlike Zhen Huan, mm -hmm. starts from a secondary attendant and moves up to become a noble lady consorts noble consorts and uh, finally she becomes the mom of the emperor mm -hmm. Rui starts off as a concubine like a yeah. consort mm -hmm. and she stays in consort for a long time and she was put in palace comes out as a consort again oh oh no she becomes a noble lady after becoming a consort so what happened to her because someone thought she killed the babies because of our yeah. someone Fake Aru affected, and it makes mm -hmm. it looks like Rui killed 
the babies kill the princes. Mm-hmm. And then that's a big crime, so she becomes the noble lady. She's put in the palace, and when she comes out, she becomes the consort again. And she moves up from a consort to a noble consort, and then to a imperial noble consort. Finally, mm-hmm. she becomes a empress, the yeah. stepped empress. That's Rui's life, I think. <laughs> It's much smoother than... If you think Zhen Huan is, is quite hard, there's another character in this drama. Like, her life is just another drama, you know. Her name is Wei Yan Wan. <laughs> um, yeah, Wei Yan Wan only appeared, like, because I'm on 40th episode, and Wei Yan Wan just appeared. I know she's going to mm-hmm. be a big character, that will that will get Rui in the way. Yeah, and Wei Yan Wan was only a palace maid, the lowest servant ever in the palace. Oh, she's pretty though. Yeah, and somehow she went to the royal garden to serve the flowers. Yeah, because of consort Chun. She went through from the lowest servant, garden servant, consort Jia's maid, and then yeah. maid of Yangxin Palace. So that's where the emperor stayed. Yeah, and that's how the emperor knows her, makes her into the concubine. Yeah, it's a t- yeah. and then she goes through the attendant, second class attendant, first class attendant, noble lady, consort, a uh, concubine, consort blah 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 and she actually goes lots of up and downs what about her boyfriend Lin Chu? Wow. yeah who just has a tragic life because of Wei Yan Wan yeah Wei Yan Wan doesn't have a strong family background and she used the the eunuch who served the emperor his name is Jin Zhong mm-hmm. so Who's the she head used of him FBI. yeah so she used him to like get the information and she knows how to make the emperor happy like even the other concubines knows it's not good for the emperor but the emperor boy who know um, that the their blood alcohol is not good every other concubine was like no you cannot drink it because it's not good for your body whereas Wei Yan Wan just like hey emperor I know you like it, and I got the dear blood alcohol. Please come and drink. Mm, yeah, she tries everything to get her up, to yeah. get her rank up. And, and she might not like the emperor. I don't I know. Don't think, there, are, there are only a few concubines that actually fell in love with the emperor. Mm-hmm. And Wei Yan Wan even trying to use her childhood boyfriend Lin Yun Che to get a baby to get the emperor's favor. Really? Oh my god, that's so immoral. <laughs> Wei Yan Wan tried everything to get the Emperor's favor. In the history, in this drama as well, she got around eight daughters and sons. Eight? And sons. Yeah, and within ten years, I think. No, none of them belongs to Lin Yun Chu because <laughs> Lin Yun Chu refused her. Refused her. And Lin Yun Chu yeah. became a, a eunuch eventually. Yeah, like Fen Shi Chu. Yeah, but... Oh. So yeah, eventually Wei Yan Wan's son, one of her son, become the next emperor. She gets a greater chance of doing that, because she has eight sons, four daughters. But she wasn't able to see that her son become the next emperor because before her son become the emperor, Qian Long gave her poison and killed her. Okay, so let's get this through. So we talked about Hailan. Oh, mm-hmm. Hailan lived, right? Hailan lived till the end. Like she, she wasn't killed by anyone. Yeah. yeah. Or she died peacefully, probably. And then Gao, Gao was at sick, and she slowly died. Rui, she cuts her hair off, and she died. Yan Wan also poisoned by the Qianlong. So no one accompanied Qianlong when Qianlong is old. Yeah, no one. So the emperor is destined to be lonely. But interesting <laughs> fact about Qianlong, because all the emperor will make sure that he has all power before he die. Like, he won't mm-hmm. give up on his power. But Qianlong is different. He actually- Because he lives for too long? <laughs> Probably, yeah. But when other emperor is sick, it's sick. They don't think of giving the power away to their sons to make the country is running properly. But Tianlong Well, does. think about Japan. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it happens this year, right?、Mm, it's a very generous thing to give out to your son. So in this episode, we kind of covered what's Rui's royal royal love and the connections、mm-hmm. between Rui and Zhen Huan. We also briefly talks about the main characters that really affects Rui's life or Rui's journey. To become an empress, and what are we going to talk about in our next episode? So in our next episode, we will talk about the eight bandits. So、mm. it's all related to the family background, and、cool. we will also talk about the Chinese herbal medicine. So it always in the palace drama, there was a royal doctor, and it's、yeah. like Chuan Tai Yi. Yeah, they always <laughs> use the yeah Chinese herbal medicine, and then.、Yeah. We'll also talk about the concubines from different countries. Ah, yeah, because in this drama there are some concubines from overseas,、yeah. but for the foreign audience, they probably wouldn't recognize it. They don't really know the difference. Like they don't know the difference between like from different parts of China, like their clothing from different parts of China, or like the difference、mm-hmm. between. Uh, Korean traditional culture and Chinese traditional culture. It's kind of hard to distinguish them. Yeah, yeah. So we'll talk about that, and then we'll talk about childhood sweetheart, which is Rui and the Emperor Qianlong. Yeah, and we'll also talk about why here is so important for for old time Chinese people. Yeah, why they don't cut their hair. Never、yeah. ever in their life. Yeah, and then like, the idea here. Extends to marriage.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that will be our next episode. Great. So stay tuned. Follow our Facebook, Instagram, and all of our podcast channels and our YouTube channel. So、mm-hmm. we'll see you next episode. Bye. Bye. 可过去的都过去了，别放在心上了。那些事儿我已经淡忘。